Hello and um, welcome to another tutorial video uh, of me making OHLE. Now in all the previous uh, videos, or most of them, you've been watching me um, actually create the model. Um, but this one I've decided that you've had enough of watching that. So we're now going to have a go at unwrapping the model. Um, that is basically texturing it. Um, and the way I'm going to do this is what I'm going to do is actually bake what's called an ambient occlusion texture. So my initial texture will just be an ambient occlusion texture. Ambient occlusion is just um, uh, essentially simple shadows. So when objects are close together, obviously less light will um, hit those surfaces because the nearby objects are are shielding them. Um, so that's what an ambient occlusion map is. It's basically to add a little bit more life or feeling to um, a model uh, by adding um, shadows already into the texture. So they're not generated in game, they're part of the texture itself. So you can see the model is different probably from the last video. We've got our extra node here and our return wire. Um, all the struts and braces and wind stays are all in here. So we're going to have a go at unwrapping. Um, going to unwrap two items, um, the uh, stanchion, well in fact we'll go for three, the stanchion which is a fairly straightforward shape, the concrete base here at the bottom and I'm going to go for unwrapping the insulator. I'm going to show you how we um, get those unwrapped and position those in the texture but I'm not going to show you everything because it will take too long. We're also going to sh um, hopefully show you the benefits of adding in a smooth shader setting. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go through that. Okay, so let's go, we'll start with the concrete box at the bottom. So when you're unwrapping, what you're basically doing um, is taking a 3D object and trying to make it so that textures can be applied on a 2D surface, a flat texture, a 2D image. So we've got a 3D object that needs a 2D image. So it's basically kind of like if you imagine a box and how it, uh, it makes a 3D cube, but it comes from initially from a piece of cardboard which is flat um, and you apply cuts and folds to it to make it wrap up into a box. Um, so we're going to change our view, we're going to go to a UV editing view and that adds in a view here on the right hand side uh, and a view here on our left. So um, uh, I normally like to have these the other way around so I'm going to swap this over to my uh, 3D view and I'm going to change this over to my um, UV image map editor, that's how I like to have it. Okay. Um, right, so right uh, into object mode with the tab button, right click on the box, I'm going to press a dot on the numpad to zoom in and control 1 to get the back orthopedic view. Okay, so you press tab to go into editor and now we can see all our edges and vertices. Now we need to unwrap this like a box, now my bottom, look, the bottom of the box has no face to it. So this is actually quite an easy one to unwrap because if you put we need to mark seams. Um, now I prefer to do manual and wrapping, but I stress I'm beginning with this. You can do automatic. I'll show you an automatic. We select everything, press U for unwrap, and go Smart UV Project. Just click the default options, and there you can see it's unwrapped that box. But I, as I say, I prefer to do um, um, manual unwrapping. So we're going to add in um, our seams, so we're going to tell the software where we want it to join stuff, or to cut. These will be the cuts of our box. So I'm going to choose all the vertical edges so that we'll have a flat surface on the top and these edges will fold out. So I'm going to do Control and E after selecting them and mark seam. You can see they turn red. Okay. So now if I press select A to, press to do all of them, U for unwrap and choose the top default unwrap. Now you can see something that looks a bit like a cardboard box plan. So I go into my UV view, I'm going to press R for rotate, I'm going to rotate that by 45 degrees. I'm going to scale that down. Well, actually, first of all, I'm going to we need an, an actual image. So let's um, make our image. We'll click on the new button. Oh, I've got a texture already set up. Um, so I can choose the existing texture. Or you could just do new and make a new one. Um, uh, yeah, we'll use our existing texture. So there's my existing texture. Texture, rather. Now... I don't want this to be outside of the image bounds. I'm, I've used a 1024 by 1024 texture. It's probably a bit large. I uh, might change it to a 512 by 512 later. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to choose some of these options. I'm going to constrain my image, uh, my UV map to the image bounds. So I'm going to scale that. And now you can see it can't go outside of the borders of the image. And um, I'm going to remember we've got lots of things to map onto this space. So I'm going to scale this down much smaller. 
because I personally don't feel that the concrete box is a particularly important feature, it doesn't take up much space. So I'm going to scale this down by 0.2. Um, well, in fact, even 1.5 might be enough. 0.15. I'm going to grab it and stick it into a corner. And you'll notice it's now right up to the edges. It's a good idea to leave the space. So I'm going to grab it and then press Y, to the Y axis, and press the up arrow twice. And then I'm going to uh, press enter to choose that and then grab it and press X and press the right arrow twice and press enter and if we zoom in a bit more you can see I've got a little border top and bottom. So that's our base unmapped, that's fairly straightforward. A slightly more complex shape if we choose our stanchion, let's go to top view, you can see the stanchion is basically a H shape so it's not too difficult to unwrap, so let's give that a go at unwrapping. So right click, um, uh, press tab, to go into um, edit mode. So now I'm going to go to top down view um, and we're going to select all these edges. I'm hoping if I just do a box around it, hopefully I'll just select the top. I selected everything. Let's um, and do that. Press 7 again. We need to untick this option here. Limit the selection to the visible areas. If I do that now. It's just now selected that top vertices. Now I, as I say, I am going to make all of those except for these inner bits here seams control E mark seam okay so that means that that top face will be um, one uh, part of my box as it were my map the bottom one here doesn't have a face because it's got a concrete box up against it so you're never going to see it so I've deleted that face we still need to tell it how to unwrap this um, shape around the side so um, Imagining that you're coming up to the driving on the track, this is the side you're going to see. You can normally drive on the left hand track, so this is the side you normally see. So, if I go to the back edge, we'll put our seam at the back and choose one of these internal lines here. Control E, mark seam. Okay, now that should be enough to allow it to unwrap. So, let's press everything A for everything, U, unwrap, and there we go. Um, I'm going to just show you some of the settings here. When you press unwrap, hold on. Unwrap. There we go. We get these ones. There's all sorts of options here. You want to have a bit of margin. What the margin does is it puts a space between what's called islands. So this is my vertical part of the stanchion. I've made that so that that maps in such a way that that's one island one group and the top was another group so make sure that there's a gap between these things so that um, uh, there's borders basically so you've got some space to work with now hold on if you remember didn't we put in this area somewhere the box are mapping so now they're on top of each other but I can't see them well, that's a bit difficult how do you arrange things if you can't see both at once well it is a way to see both things at once let's go back to object view if we select box, holding down shift now, and then select the stanchion, now we've got both of those selected. Now when we go into tab mode, and if we, because we've got both selected, if we go view, draw other objects, you can now see it's a bit faint, but there's the other map that we did here, so we can see two. So, let's get this um, uh, sorted out. Now, if we go into rather than into this mode here by change clicking this button and select this whole of this island by a right click grab it on the X move it across to there on that right hand side and then I grab it on the X and press um, grab X press left twice just to give it a border on that edge and I'm going to move this oh, well, let's make good use of this space here I could probably actually also make it a little bit bigger. So we press S to scale and bring it up a bit bigger. And just position it nicely in this box. So we're doing this manually because unfortunately in Blender, because I have multiple different objects, you can't actually unwrap multiple objects at the same time. So I couldn't just unwrap it and let it position it all automatically. I've got to do it by hand. Okay. So that's two of the items done. So we're now going to go for one of the slightly harder items. So back into object mode, I'm going to go for the um, 
Uh, well, let's go for the insulator. So we're holding down shift to keep the other one selected. Right click, tab. Okay. So we need to mark out our seams again. Um, now this is a bit more complex. Now in my mind, I have to tell you I've had a play around with this already. But I think each one of these, if I box select those, need to be uh, mapped by themselves. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to map all these individually. Okay. Oh, we need to turn this option on so we can select everything. There we go. Like so. So basically I'm going to mark these as seams. In fact, I'm doing that all wrong. I don't even know why I'm doing that. So using the Alt, you're going to ring select. So Alt and right click, select that one. Select that one there. Um, and then I think you can do Shift and G. And if we do face angles, it uh, selects similar items look, which is helpful. All of those I want to be marked as edges. So Control E, mark C. Okay. Um, then I want um, this that ring there. Control E. Uh, sorry, Shift and G. Face angles. Oh, that didn't select what we want. Let's try. No. No. Sometimes you just have to do it by hand. So we'll do that. Let's do this by hand. Basically, we're cutting this object up so that we can, so the computer basically can work out how best to unwrap it. And we're going to do the same on these edges here. These insulator fins, we're going to split up to. Okay. No, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way of doing this, you just have to work it out for yourselves. I'm also going to put a seam down the middle here. Okay. Right, we'll give that a go. So select everything, press U. Right, see, I've unwrapped it fairly well. Okay. Um, now you might think those islands, or sorry, the margins are quite big. Well, if we scale this down, also the well, islands get smaller. Now I still, you're right; they probably are a bit big. So we're going to knock this back a little bit, at half those, and we'll scale it again. So if we were to scale this by 0.25, uh, those borders are still quite big, probably. We go to a view a one to one size. Oh, maybe not. That's fine, I think. We'll go with that. Um, right, I'm just going to grab this and we'll say we're going to put this down in the corner here. So position it here, then grab on the Y, up, up. There we go. So let's actually get a texture into this, so we can bake this. Let's bring out our panel here, and we're going to go to the um, object view. Actually, we'll just switch it back to our default view. Can find the flipping view? There it is, default. Okay. And with a bit of luck, we'll be able to split our window if I can get uh, split it, and we're just going to add in our own custom. Uh, this is why I've done that because I want these options over here on the right hand side. Okay, so let's bring this across here, bring up this texture. Okay. Yes, yeah, so let's find our uh, bake options. Bring this panel out. Go in this first tab here. 
scroll to the bottom and there you've got bake make sure it's set to ambient occlusion that's not the default or uh, what clear does is it basically completely empties the texture and then puts your new one in if you have some things you want to keep you can untick that option put a margin in that's how many well let's show you if i bake let's do a bake oh look you can see it's adding some white and gray areas so if you look at the concrete base look uh, the sides here or well, light can easily get to those, but the top here has got objects near it and also got the H shape, which is the bottom base of the stanchion. So that's why it's got a big black shadow on. Um, we've got our various other bits and pieces here. Um, and this is our stanchion itself, and this is where all the clamps and various bits and pieces are. If I put a, um, a bigger border on, let's, um, let's try and bring up the, the actual area. So if I go like so, at and if I put on the stretch values, there we go. Um, um, as you can see, so that's put a little bit of border around the edges. If I do that to zero, what will happen when I bake it? If we zoom right in on these and turn off the stretch, you can see how some of that is not going to get any texture because of, of um, jagged edges basically so we need to just up make sure you've got at least a one or possibly two pixel board if I bake that again uh, even with a one pixel board it's not oh sorry I hadn't quite finished you can see now every single part of that has got is going to be covered by some texture two pixel border is safe as well okay now I want to show you um, some um, possible issues you have to be careful with very thin blocks like this the reason being is that if you this is actually not you see each one of these squares that is one pixel in my texture so this thin block is actually not even occupying a whole um, uh, pixel so with very thin areas what you can happen is that although this looks like it's got occupying some space sometimes it isn't uh, if we just um, because the software is just thinking, well, that's so close, I'll treat that as zero size. It won't occupy anything. And what that means is it might be okay this time, but have it had it on other things. I'm not explaining this very well. But basically, we're going to texture view. And if we go in on here, what you find sometimes you think, oh, that doesn't quite look right because it's got a big blob on it, or it's just, you know what I mean? It just doesn't look like the way it should do because of something that's not quite in the right, um, uh, the right look. The shadow is not quite right, basically. And the reason for that is, as I say, because the um, size of that um, part, because it's such a thin element, is so small that um, it can't map the texture very well. The trick is, basically, is to, we could, if this was an issue in this case, what we would do is we'd um, do a loop select here and a loop select here, and we'd basically split off that middle part as a separate UV map to be mapped by itself. And then I would scale it. So I'd make it bigger than it actually is, occupying more space than it maybe needs to. But I could only scale it in whichever direction was required, uh, X or Y. And it just makes it big enough so that it takes up more than one pixel. So if you're getting that issue, um, uh, which I had quite a lot, and it hasn't actually done it this time, then that's one way to solve it. Okay. Um, so that is basically unwrapping. So if we actually uh, take a look at our model now, you can see it's adding quite a lot of um, depth and feel to our object. Just these white bits are just items that haven't got any texture on them at all. But if we look at the actual um, stanchion, that's got quite a lot more 3D feel to it. Um, if we look to the um, uh, insulator, you can see obviously the inner side edges are quite dark, not a lot of light can get to them, and the base of the fins and the, uh, the rest of it. Now I just want to show you one last thing uh, to do with how um, uh, you apply the shader, and this does take effect in well in the train simulator too. So at the moment, this is shaded as flat, okay, but we can make this shaded as smooth. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole object and I'm going to go into, I think it's my, uh, oh, is it, uh, relation, I'll find the option here, um, somewhere, yeah, 
tools shading smooth and the shut this to smooth and watch the changes happens on this screen here go to smooth it's shading it as if it is a circle even though it's not it's lots of five or six sided shapes or whatever they are but hold on a second some of the things don't look right that end shouldn't be like that it needs to be flat when you do this in object view and you set the shader every single face gets the, sh the smooth or flat shader applied I can click fat or smooth look so because most of these I do want smooth I'm doing it in object view setting the whole object every face in this object to smooth I'm going to go back into edit mode and pick the faces by hand that I want to be flat that one uh, where's the flat option gone it's in here somewhere here we go flat aha and those other ones I want to be flat so these ones inside here flat so that's all I'm doing I'm going along and I'm picking specifically the items that I want or the faces not the items the faces I want to be flat now you might do this the other way around if most of it needs to be flat but a few of them need to be smooth you would go and you just leave it as it is and go into uh, edit mode and select the smooth faces that you want so the effect is being applied now and make sure you're in the solid view or rendered view because in textured view um, I'm not sure if it actually applies the effect or it's not so noticeable the effect um, well, I think it's in there but in solid view you can see now that it's trying it basically it's just it, it, it it's just making differences to how it's shaded to make it look more like a circle now on maybe on the insulator it's not quite so big an effect if we go to one of these tubes and I quickly apply it to the whole of this tube it needs some of these faces don't want to be smooth but just for the sake of argument oh, I'm gonna say this is smooth you can see this will now look much more like a cylinder a tube which is what it is okay and I'd say that effect is applied in Train Simulator by the exporter. Okay, so you've seen basic mapping, you've seen certain shaders to smooth or not, and we've done a very quick bit of positioning and scaling and how to make it so you can see more than one. And we've even baked an ambient occlusion texture. Uh, it's just a basic, a very basic texture. Um, so, um, also when you're doing baking options, I just showed these options. If you go onto this world tab, here's our options for baking so the distance if you decrease this then um, objects further away will not have as much effect, will not have any effect on the ambient occlusion the shadow map this is a blender units uh, which is one blender unit equals one meter normally so up to objects up to a meter away will affect how much light hits a, uh, a face you can also apply fall off and all sorts of other options uh, if you increase the number of samples that are taken you'll get a higher quality shadow map but it takes longer to generate but it's still only a few seconds okay i think that just about covers it today i'm going to carry on with the unwrapping and the next video will actually have it uh, show you hopefully how we actually get this to export into the game or we'll actually see the object for the first time in um, train simulator thanks for watching